Today in this video, I'm going to walk you through the complete process of installing a full Ubuntu Linux distribution on any Android phone without requiring root access. This is my Android device, and as you can see, what we're looking at isn't the typical Android interface at all. When I navigate to the Applications menu and check the About section, you'll notice that my phone is actually reporting that it's running Ubuntu 24 LTS, utilizing my device's physical RAM and processing power. Now, while it doesn't support GPU acceleration, it's surprisingly capable of handling basic computing tasks quite effectively. Let's dive in and explore just how usable this setup really is. The installation comes bundled with all the essential applications you'd expect from an XFCE desktop environment, including Thunar for comprehensive file management. I specifically chose XFCE for this demonstration due to its lightweight nature, though you're absolutely free to install GNOME if that's your preference. However, keep in mind that XFCE provides better performance on mobile hardware compared to GNOME resource requirements. I've also gone ahead and installed Firefox on this setup, and I have to say, the performance has been remarkably impressive. Now let's launch the terminal and examine the keyboard functionality within this environment. Once you've opened the terminal, simply tap on the keyboard icon located in the menu overlay circle to activate the virtual keyboard. You'll notice that the keyboard occupies the entire screen by default, but here's a neat trick. Rotate your device to portrait orientation, and you'll find that typing commands becomes much more manageable and user-friendly. Now, take a look at what we have running inside the terminal. This is a genuine ARM-based Ubuntu distribution, which is precisely what makes this solution compatible with Android device architecture. The beauty of this setup is that you can install virtually any Linux tool or application within this environment, exactly as you would on a traditional Linux system. For instance, I'm installing Git directly through the APT Package Manager, so that provides you with a comprehensive overview of what we're working with. Now let me guide you through the step-by-step -step installation process for setting up this Ubuntu environment on your Android device without requiring root privileges. The first step involves downloading two essential applications. Termux, which serves as our Linux terminal emulator, and VNC Viewer, which will handle our graphical interface. Once you've successfully downloaded Termux, launch the application and grant it the necessary permissions. We'll begin by updating the package repositories using the commands pkg update followed by pkg upgrade to ensure we're working with the latest software versions. Following the repository update, we need to install a crucial tool called Prout Distro. This is a specialized Termux utility that enables you to install and run complete Linux distributions on Android devices without requiring root access. When the system prompts you to press Y to continue with the installation, go ahead and confirm by pressing Y. After the Prout installation process completes successfully, we'll proceed to download and install Ubuntu using the Prout framework. For your convenience, I'll be including all the commands demonstrated in this tutorial within the video description for easy copying. The installation process may require several minutes to complete, so I recommend exercising patience while the system downloads and configures the Ubuntu environment. Excellent! We've successfully installed Ubuntu within our Termux application environment. To access your newly installed Ubuntu system, simply enter the command Prout Distro Login Ubuntu. Congratulations! You've successfully deployed Ubuntu within your Android device's terminal environment. At this stage, the installation provides only command line interface functionality as we're working with a minimal Ubuntu installation without graphical components. To enable GUI functionality on this setup, we'll first need to refresh the package repositories using APT, following the same procedure we used within Termux. Once the repository update is complete, we'll install the XFCE desktop environment along with its essential components, plus Tiger VNC server to render the graphical interface through our VNC viewer application. Again, all the specific commands will be available in the description section for easy reference. Please note that this installation phase may take considerable time, so patience is essential during this process. Perfect. 
the installation has completed successfully. Now we need to configure the VNC server for our graphical interface. Execute the command VNC server to initialize the server and establish your security password. Keep in mind that terminal password input is always hidden for security purposes, but the system is registering your keystrokes. Once you've set your password, the system will inquire whether you want to set up view-only access. Type N to decline, as we require full interactive capabilities. Now we need to perform some critical configuration work. Enter the following command to open the configuration file in the Nano Text Editor. Clear all existing content from this file and replace it with these specific commands. You might be curious about this step. When you initialize a VNC server on Linux, it requires explicit instructions about which desktop environment or window manager to launch upon connection. To save your changes in Nano, press Ctrl followed by X, then press Y to confirm and save the file. Next, we need to grant executable permissions to this configuration file using the chmod command. Once that's completed, execute this command to launch the VNC server. As you can see, there's already a VNC server instance running, so we'll need to terminate that process and restart with our new configuration. Perfect, that's handled. Now minimize the Termux application and launch the VNC Viewer app that we downloaded earlier. Within the VNC Viewer application, locate and tap the plus icon on the home page to create a new connection. The system will request an address, enter your local host address followed by the designated port number. You can assign any name you prefer for this connection. Since we're connecting to Ubuntu, I'll simply name it Ubuntu. After entering these details, tap Create to establish the VNC connection profile. Now select your newly created connection and press the Connect button. The system will prompt you for authentication, so enter the password you created during the VNC server setup process. Then tap Connect to establish the connection. And there you have it. We're now successfully running the Ubuntu graphical interface on our Android device. Here are some important considerations to keep in mind the initial connection attempt might not succeed immediately. If you encounter connection issues, terminate the VNC server process from within Termux and restart it. Additionally, Android's aggressive power management may occasionally terminate the server process. To prevent this, disable the child process restrictions through your device's developer options. That concludes today's comprehensive tutorial. If this video has been helpful in your Linux journey, Please show your support by hitting that like button, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.